as we leave the veterinary complex, we'll head down Campus Road to our new Community Practice Service building. And as we proceed down, you'll note on our left here is our companion animal entrance, our equine farm animal hospital entrance, and then down farther is our new Community Practice Service building. As we move down Campus Road, on our right is our new Small Animal Community Practice Service Facility. This was also a part of our class expansion project. It's a 12,000 square foot, single story, small animal clinic designed to simulate a small animal clinic out in the real world, where our services that typically are right adjacent in the hospital are not adjacent here. This facility is also run by our student groups. So we're gonna move into the facility and we're gonna meet Dr. Collins. How we doing? Morning, Herb, welcome back. Thank you, good to see you. You too, buddy. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Brian Collins and uh, welcome to Reunion 2020 and uh, a welcome to our new facility. Um, I've been on the staff of the Community Practice Service since uh, 2011, and I'm a 1994 grad. And with me today, I've got my little dog, Speck. He's a three-year-old Jack Russell Terrier who likes to come to work with me. I adopted him uh, from a local animal shelter a couple years ago, and he's going to join us on the tour. Uh, so we're starting out in our uh, reception area, obviously. And uh, actually, before I go any further, I just wanted to mention that this building um, is home to the Community Practice Service. Um, it's also home to the uh, Maddie Shelter Medicine Program. Uh, the um, Dermatology Service is going to be joining us here in the very near future. Uh, and soon to start in here when the students return, uh, primary care surgery. And that's a service where shelter animals come and students spend two weeks uh, performing physical examinations and elective procedures such as spays and neuters, lump removals, and anything else that may come up um, in that population. Um, we entered this building um, after many years of planning, meetings, um, lots of people getting together, lots of teamwork, and we opened our doors in June of 2018. And then uh, due to COVID-19, we uh, actually left the building in March, and uh, we all moved down to the main hospital uh, to help with emergency and urgent care. Uh, but we're happy to announce that next year, actually next week, sorry, <laughs> uh, we're starting to see appointments back in this building again. So soon will this, uh, we're hoping for uh, uh, clients to be making appointments with us and providing uh, more primary care and urgent care services out of this building. As you can see, we have lots of room out here for clients to be waiting. It's a very spacious area with lots of natural light. Uh, we actually have two waiting areas. We have this large area here, um, and we, onto the side here, we have the Cornell Feline Health Center feline waiting room, and the purpose of this was to provide a place for our feline patients to wait where they might be a little less stressed uh, by all the noise and dogs that could be in the room. And it's just a nice little alcove for owners and their cats to wait um, if they need to wait at all. We can uh, provide some peace and quiet in here for them. Uh, once clients, again, once clients enter and they've checked in with the receptionist, um, the uh, client service representative will make a notation in our electronic medical records, which uh, we're now using a program called EasyVet. Uh, someone in the back will be monitoring to see when a client has arrived. And once a client has arrived, either a student, a fourth year clinical student, a work study student, or a licensed veterinary, veterinary technician will come out to the reception area, greet the client, and start heading them down toward uh, an exam room. Um, in front of me is what we call the client hallway. Uh, it's turned out to be a great feature of the building. I wasn't quite certain how I would like it, but it's worked out extremely well. Um, we have lots of natural light coming in from this side. And on the exam rooms, you'll see that there are windows uh, which do provide a lot of natural light and make it very comfortable for our clients. As we head down here, 
Uh, one of the features that we're very excited about is our scale. Uh, we practically built the building around this scale. As you can see, the scale is actually recessed into the floor. Um, and we thought ahead this way um, as it makes it very comfortable for dogs. Dogs are often, as you know, kind of reluctant or nervous about getting up on the scale if it's moving and that kind of thing. Uh, but we designed this so that it's just level with the floor and they can just walk right on. Uh, we have five exam rooms here. Uh, the first one we'll go into. This is the uh, Cornell Feline Health Center exam room. And we do try to maintain this one as cat friendly as possible. We do have a feel away diffuser on the wall to help provide for the cat's comfort. Uh, we have a desktop computer. Um, we have different types of exam tables in the exam rooms, which I will show you. This one in particular is attached to the wall, but it can flip up. Um, we do that just because uh, 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 some of our clinicians and some of our students uh, do find it uh, helpful to do exams on cats on the floor at times. All right, and then we'll head on down the hall and I'll show you the other exam rooms. This is our uh, second exam room, and any of these other exam rooms can be used for cats as well. Um, this one is basically a mirror image of the one next door. Again, we have a desktop computer here, uh, an a exam table attached to the wall that can flip up out of the way uh, for flexibility. And again, I hope you can notice the natural light coming through. Uh, but we've also designed it so that there is privacy within the exam room uh, that people walking by can't really see inside. On spec, let's go see the next one. Uh, this is exam room three. A couple of uh, different features in here. We have a slightly different countertop here where people can work um, at a computer. Um, we've, we found that most of the time when we're doing appointments, we do prefer to have laptops that we can carry around with us, but we do have some uh, desktop computers throughout the hospital. One of the nice things about this room, this is one of my favorite pieces of equipment in the building. Uh, this is a very handy uh, lift table, which many of you will appreciate. It helps our backs and knees as we get older. We can lower this down to the floor. Dogs can get on, we can raise it back up again. A handy little place to tie them off for extra security. So uh, one of the nice features about this table is that it does go up and down. You can set it at the uh, appropriate height. And I also like that it can turn around to make it easier to do your exams. Voila, perfect. Uh, exam room number four. Very similar to the other exam rooms, the only difference is that we have uh, yet a different type of uh, lift table. And this one has wheels that makes it easy. We can move it around the room or move it to other rooms and other areas of the hospital as needed. And so the first four exam rooms are all about the same size with just some slight variations in countertops and um, exam tables. And um, I would point out that uh, here at the end of the hall, we have an exit, uh, which comes in handy for people who have uh, reactive dogs that we don't want to take through the waiting room, or for clients who may be emotional after euthanasia, for example, they can have some more privacy um, by leaving through this door. Uh, now we're going to go into our, our fifth and largest exam room. It has the same features of the other exam rooms, plus some others. It's obviously larger, so it helps to accommodate bigger groups of people, more students, um, a family perhaps, multiple animals, large dogs. So we will use this room as just a routine exam room, um, but we've set it up to be a bit more comfortable uh, for difficult conversations um, and especially euthanasia. Again, we have the similar exam table which can be wheeled out if we wanna make this room less clinical and more comfortable. We have some nice art on the wall. Okay, so that's um, all the client of the public areas of the hospital. Uh, now we're going to step behind the exam rooms. So behind the exam rooms, we have this, this work area. As you can see, we have a long countertop here, which we designed in mind for the students in particular to have a place to do their work, their computer work, preparing for cases, looking up, uh, you know, researching uh, for their cases. Um, it also serves as a place to have rounds. and. Uh, 
our, our staff meetings, things like that. We have a large whiteboard, which comes in handy. Um, and again, this is behind, directly behind the exam rooms. This also gives us a little bit of a buffer between the exam rooms and the treatment room to help provide some privacy while we're treating animals. And now we're gonna head from here uh, back into more clinical areas of the hospital. And we're going to enter our treatment room where most of the work takes place in the hospital. Uh, so this is our treatment room where most of the activity in the hospital takes place on a daily basis. Uh, again, we have another uh, uh, long work area that's directly behind the one on the other side of the wall. Uh, we have a couple desktop computers which come in handy for appointments, especially for technicians who are kind of doing most of their work in this area. We have two large monitors on the wall. This comes in very handy during our appointments. It really helps with our workflow and also for evaluating students. Uh, we can have a thumbnail of each exam room on the bottom of the screen and then we can zoom in uh, to any room that we want to to watch whatever appointment may be going on. We have headphones uh, so that people can be listening to different appointments at the same time. Uh, the workflow, how we do it, again, as I mentioned, someone brings the client into the room. The, uh, the veterinary technician does uh, a brief history and introduction with the client. Um, the student's monitoring on the screen. They'll enter the room uh, to take a more complete history, do a physical exam, talk to the client about a plan, things like that. Uh, the licensed veter veterinary technician, when they see that it's time to do a physical exam, will re-enter the room and help restrain for the animal. And all the while, um, a veterinarian is in the back monitoring the appointment. Um, and then in many cases, the pet and the veterinary technician will come back to the room to complete whatever procedures need to be done. The veterinarian will repeat a physical exam and the student and the, and the team actually will come up with the best uh, treatment and uh, diagnostic plan for each pet. So uh, in the treatment room, we have multiple work areas. We actually have four uh, workstations. As you can see, one on each side here. And then uh, between these two exam tables and the two in the back, we have an area for hospitalized patients. Uh, we have some of the traditional stainless steel cages. We have fluid pumps, uh, fluid uh, syringe pumps. Uh, we also wanted to expose the students to different types of cages that might be used in veterinary hospitals. Uh, we're very excited about these. We have these that were made by the Snyder Manufacturing Company. Uh, they have a lot of really cool features. Uh, Cats apparently are more comfortable with horizontal lines than vertical lines. The cages also have this frosted glass, which gives the cats some additional privacy. Uh, very quiet opening doors, less stressful for the cats, a little shelf for the cats to use if they wish, and actually heated floors. So who wouldn't want to hang out in that cage? Um, as we move back into the treatment room, we've got another set of cages there. Uh, on my left, just a refrigerator. Uh, we have Cubex system throughout the hospital, which is where we store all of our medications. In this location, we, st we store medications that would be used primarily for animals that are being hospitalized. As we move back into the treatment room, as I mentioned, we have two more workstations. Uh, this particular workstation is going to be used by our dermatology service uh, who is joining us next week. We're very excited about that. On this side, another workstation which has become primarily uh, for our ultrasound exams, uh, which is we, we obtained that piece of equipment earlier this year. We're very excited about that. Uh, moving back a little bit farther, we're now entering our dentistry suite. As you can see in this room, we have uh, the ability to do two different procedures at the same time. Obviously, we have our anesthesia machines, um, our exam lights, digital dental radiography. Uh, we have bear huggers for warming. We have the typical warm water circulating heating pads. Uh, here's our dental processing equipment to my right. Uh, 
Um, this is a very fashionable lead curtain that we use. We're taking radiographs so that separate teams are not exposed at all. Uh, we have our lead gown and, and gloves to my, to my right. Here we have the Hugavax, which are used for patient positioning during procedures. And we find those to be extremely helpful. All right, now I wanted to uh, show you our laboratory area. Come on, Spec. And that's right in here off the uh, treatment room. And in here we have um, a double-headed microscope, which comes in really handy for teaching. We love this. And we can also project images on the uh, computer screen, the monitor, uh, which works well for groups of students. Um, and then here along our countertop, we recently acquired uh, an array of IDEX equipment. We have the Acetaview for your analyses and, uh, your, uh, and the sediment. We have uh, the Catalyst for chemistry and the ProSite for uh, CBCs. Uh, in here we also do 40Xs, quick assessment tests. We have all the storage materials for our tests, cytology, all those kinds of things. And then we also have a doorway that leads conveniently out this way toward our surgical and anesthesia areas. We're going to head back toward the back of the building now. Um, so this is the door to the back of the building. And on either side, we have uh, dog kennel areas. On this side, we have several kennels of differing sizes. So out here we have this uh, very nice sized enclosed safe area for us to walk dogs. So again, this is the uh, kennel for client owned animals. And I'm making that distinction because we are going to be having shelter animals coming every week and they'll be coming in the back door. We want to try to ma maintain uh, some separation between owned dogs and sheltered dogs and cats. Um, as the shelter dogs come in, they're going to go on this side into their own kennel area. And similarly, we have eight dog runs here and a number of traditional stainless steel cages. And the animals in this area will be coming in weekly uh, for students to do procedures on as part of our primary care surgery rotation, which is another two-week rotation that's going to be working uh, in parallel with the community practice service. And similarly, we have another identical walk area uh, for this kennel as well. And again, in an attempt to keep shelter animals somewhat segregated from the client-owned animals, they're going to have their own exam room, which will be down this way. In this room, students and technicians, doctors will be working together to do physical exams, draw blood, and do other procedures on animals prior to their uh, surgery and anything that has to happen afterward. And then to kind of continue the workflow, uh, this door leads into our anesthesia induction room. So in here we have two uh, anesthesia workstations, there and there. And um, in that direction we have four small dog runs, which will be used to house dogs when they're receiving their pre-meds and also upon recovery from surgery. Again, another bank of stainless steel cages. In this room, we also have a separate Cubex, which will be used for um, injectable drugs and all of our controlled substances. And then this leads into our sterile hallway. In the sterile hallway, we have a scrub sink in this direction. We have storage uh, to this direction. And the animals will be moved into one of two surgery suites. This is the one that we've currently been using the most. So 
So um, in this room, we have two surgical setups uh, with all the bells and whistles, uh, the anesthesia machines, uh, the uh, surgical lights, bear huggers, uh, hot water circulating heating pads, syringe pumps, fluid pumps, um, and electrocautery. Uh, because of the close proximity, one veterinarian could potentially be monitoring two surgeries, um, or we could have two separate veterinarians each monitoring a surgery individually. And then we step out back this way. So this is our uh, second surgical suite, just has one table. It's basically set up the same as the other one. It's just that we uh, just had it set up this way so that we could just run, uh, run uh, one procedure at a time in this room. Uh, so now we're back in the sterile hallway. Um, at this point, we've walked through how the workflow will be for animals coming from the kennel into their treatment room, into the um, in, in anesthesia induction room, into surgery. Then they'll go back into the induction area. So once animals come, uh, their surgeries are completed, they'll come back in here, um, be monitored during recovery. They'll either stay in here uh, for the rest of the day until they go home if they're client-owned animals, or once they're recovered adequately, uh, they'll be returned to their kennel area, whether they're a, a shelter animal or a client-owned animal. All right, so now we're about uh, done looking at all the uh, clinical areas of the hospital. Uh, here to my right, we have two rooms which we're calling cat wards, although we're anticipating that they may be used for other things and that their uh, purposes may change over time, but we've uh, kind of built in that flexibility. Uh, as you can see, we have a bunch of stuff in here, but we have more of those uh, cat-friendly cages there. And um, again, this room could be used for other things. And we've kind of built in that flexibility. And we're just going to move down the hallway. So uh, these rooms could certainly support the use of um, uh, like a, a cat spay-neuter clinic, or if we wanted to isolate animals based on illnesses, for example, we have the ability to do that. And working our way down the hall, again, on this side of the building, down in here. I uh, have a washer-dryer in here, a large storage room in here, and our electrical room is in here. To my right in here is our kitchen where uh, animal food is prepared. So we have a lot large refrigerator room for preparing food and some storage for food uh, for animals in the building as well as food that we can dispense to clients to take home with them. And on my right here is our large conference room. Uh, this room gets used uh, quite a bit. We have student rounds in here. We have um, faculty meetings, full staff meetings. We can project uh, medical records on the screen, PowerPoints. We have a whiteboard here. It's a very comfortable room uh, with windows looking out toward the, uh, the main hospital. We kind of went a little crazy. We wanted to make this room colorful and fun, so we picked out lots of chair colors. And here we are on the side of the hospital we have this uh, fairly large area which is a break room for anyone who works in the hospital the students staff uh, faculty occasionally will have rounds out here as well depending on how many people are in the building if we need to spread out a bit another storage room there now now we're along the front of the building which we uh, where we have all of our staff and faculty office space uh, we have a men's and women's locker room on either side. Uh, here I'll just point out that we have this display of a history of shelter medicine at Cornell. And then as we proceed down the hall, we encounter faculty and staff offices and another display of the a history of Cornell's small animal community practice through the years.
And now we're back up near the front of the building. I just wanted to point out, this is our main Cubex. Uh, this contains all the drugs and products that we store uh, for uh, dispensing to clients. We also have a refrigerated unit which holds our vaccines and our refrigerated drugs that we use during appointments that's also controlled through the Cubex as well and ties in with our uh, electronic medical record. So at this point, we've uh, covered the entire hospital. I want to thank you for uh, joining us on this tour. We're sorry you can't be here with us, but uh, in the future, if you're here for a meeting or a reunion or just happen to be passing town, uh, please look us up and we'll be happy to give you a tour. Where'd my dog go? Spec.